Hello everyone, it's Christine here. Uh, thanks for joining me for the webinar on reformat basics on your CT operator console. Just remember that the purposes of this webinar is for educational purposes only. So the purpose of this course is to understand how to create a multiplanar reformat and to save a bleak, curved and 3D batch series on the operator console of your CT scanner. I will also show you how to create and implement an MPR preset protocol to activate an automatic batch on the operator console. So upon completing this training, you'll be able to handle the reformat option to create multiplanar reformats on the operator console, and you'll be able to create and implement MPR preset protocols. The course will be split into three chapters. The first chapter, I'm going to just give you an overview of what a reformat is. In chapter two, we're going to look at multiplanar reformats, um, batch, curved, and 3D. And in chapter three, we'll finish off with how to create a batch preset protocol and use it in a direct MPR. So let's look at the different types of reformats. MPR actually stands for multiplanar reformat. In reformat, you can it's a process to convert axial scanning data into another plane, for example, coronal sagittal or an oblique plane that's adapted to the object of interest. There are different modes to select for an MPR creation. The most common one is probably an average. So this is what it looks like, and it displays the reformat model using the average of the Hounsfield density values of the slice taken along lines perpendicular to it. In this slide, we're looking at what we call a MINIP. It's a minimum intensity projection. It displays the reformat model using the minimum intensity pixel mode. In this mode, the density of each point on the screen in the minimum, de sorry, minimum density along a line perpendicular to the screen. A MIP is a maximum intensity projection, so it's opposite to a MINIP. It displays the reformat model using the maximum intensity pixel mode. So in this mode, the density of each point on the screen is a maximum density along a line perpendicular to the screen. A volume rendered mode, or VR, is a technique that uses the concept of opacity. For different density levels, each voxel transmits a certain amount of light. It's also known as 3D rendering. So we're just going to have a look at how we do each one of those. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a batch of reformats. Before creating the batch, I'm going to just give you a quick overview regarding the reformat application. So in the browser, in ImageWorks, select the patient that you want to do the uh, reformats on and select the thin slices. Load them up into reformat. When the images are loaded into reformat, it loads with a default layout. So in this top left image, you have an oblique image. In the top right, there's an axial image. In the bottom right, there's a coronal image. And in the bottom left, there's a sagittal image. You can scroll through the images using the slider bar on the left of the image.
And remember that you can change any of the annotations that are read on the image. For example, if we wanted to change this axial image into a different view type, we could just click over the word axial and select a different view type. So we can select a coronal. Any of the numbers on here, you can just left click to make them bigger or right click to make them smaller. You can also adjust numbers on the screen by holding down the middle mouse and moving the mouse left or right. And if you wanted to change the window width and level, you can click, you've got some defaults there. This image control area on the left of the screen, these buttons here just allow you to change the function of the left mouse button. So this one here is page through the slices or rotate a volume. This one is zoom, that one's pan. This one is to select a viewport or deposit a point. This is your window widths and levels. You can see that I've just rotated this oblique image here. And if I just want to um, orientate back to an anterior position, I can use these um, letters here. So S is superior, I is inferior, A is anterior, P is posterior, L is left and R is right. Just to the left of the image orientation buttons, you have the choice of a simple oblique or a double oblique. The simple oblique mode displays a line cursor in the reformatted views, and this is used to define a new plane. So what you need to do is set the function of one viewport to oblique. Isolate another viewport and click the simple oblique on. The solid yellow line here represents the plane of the oblique reformat. So this can be tilted and you can see that it's updated the image in the bottom right. The double oblique or multi oblique button displays three oblique planes defined by these color coded axes. So the blue line represents the sagittal image, green line is the axial image and the orange line is the coronal image. These can be changed just by clicking and dragging. And when you turn off the multi oblique tool, those orientations are saved. If you want to save a single image, just right click over the image and select save or save image as if you want to give it a name. That image will now be saved in your database. On the left here, you'll also find the tool menu and the tool we're going to focus on today is the batch tool. You'll find the batch tool in the My Tools section. It's this one here. Um, if you have customized it to be in My Tools, if it's not in there, you'll definitely find it under the Film Save tab. It's there. So if it's not already in My Tools, you can right click on it and say Add to My Tools. It's already there, so we can't do it. If you want to remove any tools from My Tools, just click and drag them out. 
So that was a recap of the uh, tools and functions of reformat. So we'll carry on and I'll show you how to create a batch um, of oblique reformats. So if we just open up the batch tool here, I'm going to create them on this uh, coronal image because I want to make some sagittal reformats of the spine. So I'm just going to click on that viewport and click on the word oblique over on the left hand side. So that will make the batch of images jump into the viewport that we want to be using. You just need to define the range of the batch using these arrows on the left and right hand sides of the batch. The red square in the middle is the centre of the batch and these small red squares on the side mean you can angle the batch one way or the other. If you want the images to be a strict sagittal or, corona or axial um, image, you can use the keyboard arrows on the keyboard, which will change the orientation into a strict sagittal or axial. I want this one to be a little bit angled down the anatomy, though. You need to think about the window widths and levels at this point. So because this is a spine, I'm just going to change that into a more bony window. Back over on the left hand side here, you need to define how many images you want uh, or the spacing between the images and the slice thickness. You can also choose the rendering mode between average, MIP, MINIP or volume rendered. We're just going to do an average and also the field of view. So I want the whole of this spine to be in. So I'm just going to change the field of view to 36, which is the maximum we can have on this patient. If you want to preview the images, just click on preview here and that will scroll through the images that you'll get. If we just close that down again. I want to save those, so I'm just going to select the output to save and type in a description. And save it. OK. It's going to ask if we want to keep that description. I'm just going to say OK. That batch of images is now saved on our database. Just remember that you can individually save images as well just by right clicking and save image. And that's how you make a batch of oblique images. So I'm just going to go back to reformat and show you how to make a curved image. So the easiest way I find to do a batch of curved images is to first of all uh, change one of the views to a curve and then we're going to define the curve on this sagittal image of the spine. So I'm going to point where I want to start and press the shift key to bring the cursor up there. Then I'm going to hold the shift key and just draw my trace along the spine. And you can see in the top left image, it's updating that curved view. So to save a batch of those images, I'm just going to find the batch tool again. So click on batch and select loop mode. So what we want to do is scroll the Im first image to where we want to start. So I'd like to start at the front of the spine. You can see the curve moving forward there on the sagittal image. And I'm just going to set my start point there. Then I'm going to scroll backwards to the back of the spine and set my end point there. 
Now I probably don't need 119 images, so let's just have 20 images and preview them. You can see them scrolling through there. Again, to save them, just select save, give them a name. and click OK. That batch will be saved on your browser. So now you know how to do a batch of curved images and a batch of oblique images. So I'm just going to show you how to save a batch of 3D rotation. To do that, I'm just going to exit from reformat and start off with the same set of images. This time I'm going to go into the volume viewer. I'm just going to change into the general section because I know there's a nice volume rendering protocol there. Here it is, so I'm just going to select that one and automatically it loads up with a volume rendered image in the top left hand corner. To manipulate this image you can either use this red box that comes up in the select mouse mode or if you want freehand rotation you just need to click on page rotate and then you'll be able to move the image any way you would like it to. To reset it again just remember you can use the uh, anatomical buttons there so I've just put it back to anterior. So to save a batch of those again just open up the batch tool and you'll notice that we have a um, arrow tool here. So the yellow arrow is the direction of rotation. So if we want to change that, we can just click on the other arrow and preview that there. Again, you just need to um, tell the scanner how many images you'd like or the angle between the rotation and the field of view. So just do that before saving. If we exit from here, we'll see that those uh, batches are all saved in our patient list. If we wanted to send them off to packs just select and click on packs at the bottom there. Um, so now we're just going to talk about how to create a batch of preset protocols and implement them into a direct MPR. So direct multiplanar reformat allows reformat protocols to be prescribed prospectively in a scan protocol. Productivity is improved by providing a real-time display of sagittal and coronal images in addition to the axial images. During this video, I'm going to show you how to create a batch of MPRs that can be applied into your protocols and used as a DMPR to improve productivity and workflow. The first step is the creation of the DMPR protocol. This must be edited in the reformat of the acquisition console. So on the right screen, click on Imageworks and select the series on which you want to create the batch. The thin slices, load them into reformat. When you've opened the exam into reformat, decide which image you want to create your DMPR protocol on. Just remember, for this to work properly, you should never use the oblique image for this. 
So I'm going to use the sagittal one because I want to create some uh, coronal images of this chest. So I'm going to click on the sagittal viewport and open the batch tool. The next thing you need to do is determine which orientation you want the batch to be in. I want these to be coronal, so I'm just going to turn them round so that they're running from anterior to posterior. And I'm going to cover the whole chest from skin surface to skin surface. Now, to make sure these are absolutely straight in the coronal plane, I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard just to make sure they're a true coronal. The next thing I'm going to do is just check that the window widths and levels are correct. And I'm going to determine the number of images I want or the spacing in between and the slice thickness. I want this to be an average, but for DMPR, you can either have average, MIP or MINIP. You only need to define the field of view if you're going to be using this as a manual reformat. If you're going to be using it in DMPR, then the field of view will be defined according to the primary recon and also the start and end positions and the window widths and levels will be the same as the primary recon. To save this protocol, you need to click on the advanced button at the bottom and save as a protocol. Just make sure that there's only one step in this protocol because multiple step protocols can't be put into DMPR. So we'll click save as a protocol, give it a name so you know what it's called, I'm going to call this Live Expert Demo. And I'm going to save it as a new loading protocol. This protocol will now be saved in uh, the Volume Viewer protocols and it will also be able to be integrated as a DMPR in your acquisition protocols. Just for information, um, the other choices you have on here are save it with this current protocol and that means it's saved over in the list of protocols to be used with this current protocol. The other thing you can do is save it as a layout preset and that will save it as a reformat review step. Now that we've built this protocol, we can exit the reformat. And the next step is to apply that within the protocol. So if we click on protocol management, I'm going to just add it into this arterial chest protocol. So I'm going to click on that protocol and edit the protocol. We don't need to apply it on the Scout, so we can just go to the next series and click on the Recon tab. To apply that protocol into Recon 1, we just need to click on Auto Apps, click on the word Off, and it opens up this other window, Session Setup. You'll notice that they're all turned off at the moment, but if we click Start New and select the first unused protocol, it opens up a list of all the protocols that we have. You can see that the one I just created, Live Expert Demo, is at the top of the list. So I'm just going to select that one and click OK. Now we have our DMPR protocol selected. Um, if we want it to automatically run, we need to turn auto batch to on. And if we want it to automatically send to packs, we need to click on auto transfer and then select the host off your list. If you've set up more than one DMPR protocol, this button apply all at the bottom 
will apply the auto transfer to all of the other recons as well. Filming and setup is if you want to be printing out onto film. Um, I don't know anywhere that does that these days. And auto store is for other network hosts like workstations um, and things like that. So you can also have those set up. You'll notice once you've exited from that screen that the auto apps now says DMPR on new. Um, so that means it has got a DMPR applied to it. Um, you can apply the same DMPR protocol to any of the 10 recons. So if we just have a look at recon 2, this one already has some DMPRs in there. So I'm just going to select the next one down, select my live expert demo, turn it on to auto batch and send it to PAX. When you've finished applying the DMPRs, you can click the Accept button, which will save the protocol back in, in, pro, in the user protocols, and quit protocol management. So just to summarise, during this course, you've learnt about creating multiplanar reformats and saving them as a batch oblique a batch curved and a 3D volume rendered rotation. You're also able to create and implement MPR preset protocols to activate an automatic batch. We'll move on to questions and answers in just a moment. Just want to let you know that um, there are quick reference guides for everything that we've talked about and you can download them from here as well. So if you just wanted to click on um, the files that you want and then you'll be able to download them if you want to do that. The, there are links in the next section as well and I'll have this up in the question and answers just to give you time to do that. Thanks for listening.